Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are launching a special line of apparel for Miss Peggy. Uh, part of the proceeds will go to benefit her and her family. I wish all the proceeds go benefit her and her family. As I should be, but you know, business is business. But uh, this is a wonderful day. It's amazing that God would find two people from two different walks of life, <laughs> two different generations, and uh, bring them together as he has. She's always greeted me with love, compassion, support, uh, stability, and hope. And uh, I'm thankful to know her. I'm thankful that she can get to me anytime she desires to. <laughs> and I'm thankful to be celebrating her 100th with her. She is the epitome of CU Buff. She's the epitome of Buff Nation. She is uh, the rock <laughs> that holds us all together. And I'm thankful to know her. I really am. Thank you, Ms. Becky. You're Thank so wonderful. you. I love you to life. Thank you. Love you to life. Any questions for Ms. Peggy? Thank you. What did, what did it mean to you to have the whole football stadium sing happy birthday to you on Saturday? Repeat the question. Your whole football stadium sing happy birthday to oh, you? Oh, what did that mean? Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't even comprehended it yet. But I just, I cried. And it, I just thank God for my life and for all the friends and for everything that's happened to me. I just wish my twin sister were here. It all started because we were twins. And very, I will, I can't deny that we've been loyal fans. But I said to get all this attention for just having a good time <laughs> is unbelievable. We can go ahead. Ms. Peggy, first, uh, happy birthday. Congratulations on such a big milestone. With the Rose Shield Independent, um, right, you have been two more games, right, than really anybody on our team at the University of Colorado. Will you repeat the question? You, you've been to more games yeah. than anybody so on earth? A, oh. You have a favorite game of all of those games? A favorite game? Yes, ma'am. Well, it'd have to be several games. I wasn't at Michigan, but I was sure watching it. I liked the miracle at Michigan. I liked when we beat Nebraska. Don't ask me what year it was in the 80s, I think. 62 to something or other. And, oh, there were games before when we were one, two, three in the nation with Oklahoma and Nebraska when we beat Oklahoma. The, that, that's before any of you were around, probably. <laughs> <laughs> there are quite a few, not just one. Do one more, Adam, go ahead. Hi, Miss Peggy. Adam Mr. Tiger, 24 7 Sports. Coach Prime has on some level dedicated this football season to you. What, <laughs> what, what has that meant to you? Well, I, I don't know that I can explain what it's meant. It's, it's been unbelievable to me. And he's given us, our whole community and the university, all of this, this attention because it's because of him. And he's a very, very honorable man. And I am just grateful for it and I just, each day I get him, I think this is all unbelievable. So that's what he is, kind of unbelievable. <laughs> Thank you. I have one final question for Ms. Peggy. Which bowl do you want to go to? <laughs> well, I'll take anything they give us. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Peggy. I've got some other stuff for you to do out here, okay. too. Okay. I got you. You want to take yep, those? Yep, I got those. I'm not as nimble as I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. We got you. Thank you all Thank very you. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank give every the room a minute to calm down. <laughs> that was awesome. That was tremendously awesome. Students of the week, Dallin Hayden, Ethnic Studies, Carson Westbrook, 
mechanical engineer, engineering. Um, Amari McNeil, Big 12 Defense Player of the Week. John T. Wester, Big 12 Special Teams Player of the Week. Shador, honorable mention for the Earl Campbell Player of the Week. Draylon Miller was the highest graded freshman wide receiver of this past week. Travis is one 11 sitting my finalist for the Belinknikoff Award announced today. Uh, defense, four sacks, nine tackles for loss, six pass breakups, nine quarterback hurries, three interceptions, three forced fumble, uh, forcing four turn turnovers, sacks. We're leading Big 12 and six nationally. Tackles for loss, leading the Big 12, 11th nationally. Fumble recoveries, lead the Big 12 and fifth nationally. One of four teams nationally with 10 or more interceptions and fumble recoveries this season by committee. 14 players, one sack, 15 players, quarterback hurry, 13 players pass breakup, 10 players force fumble, five players has, have an interception, 21 players tackle for loss, which means we're doing our job. Offense, uh, blah, blah, blah. It's everything. Uh, we're playing against a tremendous team. Coach Leopold, am I saying that right? Can you not state the name so I can get it correctly? Leipold. Leipold. Le Why did I say Lee? Like Leipold, am I? You not saying that correctly? Because I love him to life. He's a a friend. He reached out to me. I reach out to him um, probably every few weeks, and uh, I'm thankful because you're talking about. I didn't know any of these coaches, but probably Joy going into this uh, this season, and for the, these guys to on their own account to reach out to me to show me love and respect. It's tremendous, but he's been consistent. I mean, consistent since uh, media day, uh, he and his son, and I have the utmost respect and regards for him and his team. They're tough, they're physical, um, they play a consistent game. Their quarterback gives you problems because he's very versatile. The defense, uh, they can take the ball away, interception-wise. Uh, they have not given up, regardless of what their record may State uh, the last two weeks they've uh, uh, they've knocked some people off their off their feet, but it's going to be a tremendous task for us. He's going to have those guys ready to play. Uh, we're going to be in an environment uh, that's not conducive to us being successful in Kansas City. I can't wait to see the stadium uh, myself. I'll be back there. I think I played there once upon a time years ago, but I don't know. Maybe a new stadium, but you know, I'm not I'm not as young as I once were. But uh, I look forward to going there, playing this tremendous game we call football. I really do. But my hat's off to Coach. He's done a wonderful job, and he will not allow those young men to give up. And that's, uh, that's a blessing to, to him and his coaching staff. Let's go. Open in 72, Coach. Please Excuse me? I said the stadium opened in 72. So I did play there. <laughs> I don't think I played baseball at the new stadium. This is, is it a new baseball stadium? No, it's, it's remodeled. It's remodeled? So I played baseball and football there, okay. Hi, Nick. Hi, guys. Adrian. Mm -hmm. uh, Nick Edwards, C Sports Report. When we see Draylon Miller put up 100 yards in the last game, how do you feel like he's going to be incorporated more into this offense and team? Well, I'm not going to say you're going to force anything to incorporate him. If he has the matchup, Shador is going to take advantage of the matchups. And we have a smart quarterback. We have a young man that uh, knows where to go with the football and protects the football pretty well. Draylon, Draylon is uh, he's a Debo Samuels. He has running back ability, receiving ability, uh, quarterback ability at times. You put him in Wildcat, the kid is phenomenal. Kid does not complain. The kid just goes out there and does his job. So I'm really proud of him that you see that we have yet another weapon. How are you doing? Good. Thank you for asking. Um, Kansas is on a two-game win streak against ranked teams, and we'll be playing at Arrowhead of all places. Mm -hmm. How do you guys plan to stop that streak on Saturday? Well, we plan to do what we uh, we do. We're we're a pretty physical, pretty aggressive team defensively. We we've, we've really been stout. Offensively, we can move the ball down the field. We got to improve our running running game, of course. But we're going to go out there and do what we've been consistently doing, and that's. Uh, getting after the running backs, uh, pretty much shutting down the run, forcing them to be one dimensional, then taking advantage of situational football. Offensively, we got to do a better job of running the football. We all know that. We all desire to.
but that has to be a consistency in the passing game and just moving the ball all around the field. We have so many weapons. We just got to use the what we have and get the ball to the proper people at the proper time. And I think we'll be okay. Scott, go ahead. Hey, Coach Scott Parker, DMV. How are you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. Um, obviously, he was involved in the game. And he told us a few weeks ago that the plan was looking at the red shirt. Is, is that still the plan? And no, we'll it's, the it's not the plan. Um, sometimes a young man may want a plan to uh, happen for different reasons, and he may outplay his plans. He's outplayed his plans. You make plans when, when, when you don't think you're a valuable piece of the puzzle at this wonderful university, and he is a valuable piece of the puzzle for right now. Um, we ain't got time to be looking down the street to next year. Right now is everything to us. And I think he's made a decision that he's a right now type of player. And I'm thankful that he has. Oh, we don't know. Mike is going to play. Uh, we don't know. Hopefully, Jimmy c can work tomorrow or Thursday. I don't give a darn if Jimmy works Friday. If he showed me he could run, he's going to play. Just Jimmy's presence out there on the field alone strikes fear in the opposition. Thank you. Coach, uh, first, I love the jacket. But, uh, I, think Rich, you and Hedrick, uh, I love the, the onesie. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. It was my grandpa's. Um, yeah. So, first, did you get the Peggy a birthday present? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I think we all collectively got Miss Peggy a birthday present. Um, and uh, second, so for both you and uh, Miss Peggy, obviously, religion has been a major part of your lives, um, both on and off the field. Um, has your relationship with her impacted uh, your relationship? Have my relationship with her impacted my relationship with God? I don't understand that question. You know, knowing Miss Peggy, right? Mm -hmm. um, has that impacted your relationship, your personal relationship with God? My life? personal relationship with God is, is, is truly strong. I don't think uh, anyone in this room could impact that relationship. I'm hoping that I can impact your relationship with God. Uh, Peggy has a tremendous relationship um, with the Lord, I'm, I'm sure. We have not sat down and discussed that because I'm so excited just to be around her. Um, I don't discuss those type of things. But uh, my relationship is tremendous. and It's not gonna cease, it's not gonna stop. I'm not gonna be ashamed of the gospel. That's what my Bible tells me. And I'm gonna proclaim my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, wherever I want to. Ain't nobody gonna tell me not to uh, give love and show respect to my Lord and Savior that has blessed me and has pulled me up from suicide and uh, thoughts and, and a multiplicity of things that you don't know. So I'm thankful, um, not just only for myself, but Miss Peggy. First of all, let's focus on that she's 100, man. Not, not that, I don't know what goose chase you're on right now, but not that, but she is 100 years old. That is to be applauded, has all her faculties, all her sense. I mean, she's on her game. She ain't, she knows you, me, everybody in this room, like she ain't no joke, man. So that is unbelievable. And what transpired in our stadium last Saturday was epic. I mean, I had to turn away from the screen because I was getting ready to cry. And uh, I didn't want the opposing team thinking they making me cry. <laughs> no, it was Peggy. Like, 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 like that's what that was. So I'm so thankful for her. I'm so thankful just to to meet her, and uh, I applaud Rick. I mean, we went with the Peggy's crib, and she rolled out the red carpet for us, man. I wanted to dip back body and get something to eat, you know, <laughs> without Rick, you know. <laughs> so I'm just so thankful of the relationships that uh, I've gleaned from uh, Rick and, and so many other persons that have welcomed me with open arms in this wonderful uh, shoot university as well as the this community. Thank you, though, my man. I love it. And just uh, last question: Did you and the team sing along with the prayers? You, you own one today, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Next question. Coach, the team got their a massive card there by the sign. Yeah, I signed it. I know. Hey, coach Brian Howell, Boulder Daily Camp. I have two How you doing? First off, Cam Stillman, Craig. He yeah. Talks about him a lot. Yeah. Um, I know he's uh, grown up with you. Mm -hmm. You've seen the way he's playing right now. You've seen him for years. What does it mean to you to see him uh, kind of grow up from where he was when you met him to where he is now? Um, it's astounding. One of the scouts just asked me about Cam. 
And uh, I went on and on and on because he checks every box. You, you put a clock on him, he may not run a 4-4. Four four. You put him on the bench press, he may not bench 225 15 or 20 times. But you put the tape on. You're going to see him. He's going to not only show up, he's going to show out. He's the leader of our defense. He is the backbone of that defense. When he's off the field, we hurt. So I love everything that he brings to the table. And he's been that way since I met him as a junior from Alabama. My second question is, Travis is obviously a semifinalist, finalist for a whole bunch of awards, one of them being the Phillips that you won. I'm mm -hmm. just curious what that meant to you to win that award and, and also well, to see Travis on the floor right now. Well, what it meant to me is just told y'all who I was. That's it. I knew who I was. I was just waiting on y'all to give me the darn trophy to stabilize that who I was. Travis is the best defensive player and the best offensive player in the country. So um, if that stabilizes and, and authenticate who he is, so let it be. But I don't, I don't see anybody better. I don't see anyone projected better. The scouts will tell you. Everybody will tell you who knows this game of football. So, I mean, he should win the Thorpe, the Belentnikov, the Jerry Rice, the Prime Award. He should win every darn award that you got. Matter of fact, why don't they have me an award, Rick? <laughs> he, wouldn't that be good if a player that played for me win the prime? We'll work on that. Yeah, they should. They're the best corner in, in the college football. They should be called a prime. <laughs> good morning. Troy Rank from the Denver Post. How you doing, sir? Good. You had told us a few months ago you thought Shadur would be the top pick in the draft. No, oh, don't just stumble past that. <laughs> Don't just stumble past that. You said, I told you months ago that Shador would be the top pick. A lot of people didn't believe me, huh? Remember I said that Travis and Shador have an opportunity to be one and two? Remember that? Everybody just pulled out a, a, a double barrel shotgun and shot at me when I said that, right? <laughs> now it's all coming to light. When he escaped, uh -huh. oftentimes, what do you think when he escaped? Get rid of the ball. I'm thinking, get rid of the ball. Get rid of the ball. Just get us back to the line of scrimmage. Get rid of the ball. But he has, he escapes and his head completely goes up and he sees the field. Because he's not escaping to, to run. He's escaping to get rid of the ball so he could have time to, to make progress down the fields. Yeah, I remember watching him even in high school. When did you realize he had the ability to take chances and take care of the ball? Which uh, is hard for kids to kind of yeah. find out. I don't know if he desires to take chances. I just think he's trying to... Uh, give himself more time so he can make something happen. I don't, I don't call it a chance. Okay. I think it's more of an opportunity than a chance. But we trust him. We, we truly trust him. Hi, Coach Adam. Most of time How you doing, Adam? Adam? Sports, doing well. I'm wondering, McNeil made some plays for you last year, early in the season. Mm -hmm. Has he kind of unlocked something? He's a whole different guy on and off the field. He's a whole different person. He's a whole different player. His mindset is totally different. Um, I'm, what you're seeing now is what we expected from Amar, even last season. He's grown so, me, so much mentally. It's, it's unbelievable. So I'm thankful and I'm, I'm proud that, that I'm here to witness what we knew he could do. And now he's understanding what he's capable of. I think once upon a time he thought he was just a pass rusher. But he's a complete defensive tackle right now. And he's a force to be reckoned with. So I'm, I'm truly proud of him. Ryan, go ahead. Hey, Coach, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing great, thank you. Um, the latest thing that people have used to try to tear down Travis's Heisman campaign oh, is Lord. tackle numbers. Oh, my um, God. If you could explain to those who don't know. How can you make tackles? That, uh, first of all, if a cornerback has eight tackles in the game, do you guys know what that means? Anybody? <laughs> that means they caught six balls. That's what that means. They caught six balls on him because two of those are probably run support. But that means he caught six balls. So if you see a corner with a lot of tackles, that's not a good sign. Okay? So just, just those of you out there in the, the, the world of, of, of football, if you see a corner with a lot of tackles, they've caught a lot of balls on him. All right? Is that good enough for you? There you go. Sounds right. Hey, Coach, John Preach, not you. Yes, sir. As a leader, how do you guard against a letdown game? Um, I don't know what that means, a letdown game. I, I, I really don't know what that means. I don't, I don't plan on failing. I, I never make plans to fail. I don't even like having insurance, but there's something they tell me I must do. Okay, so I don't, I don't plan to fail whatsoever. 
we plan on being dominant and having success. So we don't think about the other side of those things that many may think about. So we don't think about letdowns. We think about dominating. Um, the word of this morning, was we defined the word finish. We talked about finishing. I showed a clip of this gentleman that came from the same college that this other gentleman, and they was running this these hurdles, and it came down the stretch to the end. After they hit the last hurdle, they were neck and neck. And next thing you know, um, ten y uh, three yards from the finish line, one dove and one didn't. The one dove wanted a little wanted it a little more than the other. Although they came from the same college of institution of learning, one wanted it more than the other one because the one chose to finish and the other didn't. We're going to be the, per the one that dove. We're going to finish with every darn thing we got, and we're not going to even entertain uh, the other side of that life by not finishing. Great yeah. question, though. Coach, I know we just got some time to keep our ear. First one, um, stakes get bigger and bigger with every game. Do you lean into the stakes and, and the pressure, or do you downplay them? Do you um, look at me, man. Do I look like I subscribe to pressure, or do I look like I apply it? We apply pressure. We don't subscribe to it. If I was in church, they'd have hit me then. <laughs> <laughs> my my follow-up would be basically, you know, you're mentioned for everything that comes up. You face college, pro, whatever. Yeah. Do you uh, think that keeps You're going to talk like that with my AD in here? <laughs> That's so disrespectful. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. You gonna talk about me going somewhere with my AD in there? No, just the mentions of it. Yeah, they mentioned us with a lot of other stuff before we started winning too, didn't they? <laughs> did, did that? Uh, that wasn't fair, was it? Price of winning. Or? Price. That's the price of everything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not gonna keep going with that. I'm happy. With, I am happy where. Hold on one sec. I'm happy where I am, man. I'm good. I got a kickstand down. You know what a kickstand is? A lot of people don't in there and not of age don't know what a kickstand is. That means I'm resting. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic about where I am. I love it here. I truly do. Next question. My man. My man. My dog. <laughs> they thought they counted you out, but you didn't steal. God gave him favor. Yeah. On three, how you like him now? <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna say it. You're darn right, I'm gonna say it. Let's go. I'm sorry. I'm, I apologize. That's the pettiness. I, I'm, I'm kind of petty at times, but that's the pettiness in me. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Dukes. All right. You had a lot of naysayers before the season. True. All right. Now you see a lot of people changing their tune, and I know you keep the seat. Yeah. Well, I don't believe they're changing their tunes. I just think they're saying what's popular. Okay. And what's Is there up? Any receipt? That you have that stands out as well. No. Are they all the same? No, I, I really don't care that much. Every once in a while I get petty. Right now I'm so focused on us and so locked in on what we have in front of us. I ain't got time to, to look at naysayers. I, I glory on uh, uh, positivity, not the negativity. I'm not one to look at nine positive comments and highlight that, that one negative. I'm going to focus on those nine positive ones, not the negativity. Some more what about my man, Jack? Come on, dog. Say it. <laughs> Carlo. Uh, just curious, from a, from a Barry McNeil, a Carter Stoudemire, and I know you've been like Braylon Miller, it seems like several guys who have been given greater opportunities due to injury have really stepped up this year. Right. What, what does that say about this group? Well, it says a lot about the roster. It says a lot about the depth. It says a lot about the we understand the difference between the difference between the chance and the opportunity, and those guys are taking advantage of their opportunities. But it says a lot about the depth, uh, the development of these young men. It says a lot about uh, we don't suppose to recruit guys out of high school, but I think we got three freshmen that are playing prominent roles in on our team right now and doing a wonderful job. About to have four because two nine is back now, so he's going to be. Um, involved in the running game as well this week. So um, it says a lot about the recruiting, says a lot about the staff, says a lot about what we plan on being and the stability that we're going to be here for a while. We ain't going nowhere. We're about to get comfortable. Two more questions. Coach, how you doing? Yes, sir. Hey, I respect how you always stay humble with the coaches past and these guys. Yeah.
Well, some of these wonderful coaches that we're playing against, they've uh, embraced me tremendously. And I'm always appreciative of that. They don't have to. They don't have to go outside the norm and embrace me. And we're playing against a wonderful coach this week, but that not, not, did not only embrace me, but he calls me to check on me to make sure I'm straight. I call him to check on him to make sure he's straight. Now we happen to be going head to head this week. But it's a level of respect and admiration and adulation that we have for one another because we know how hard it is to win in college football. Not only win, but be consistent. So especially with the portal, with this, with that, with everything transpiring, the injuries, uh, everything that goes on in college football now, it, it's not it's, it's not easy whatsoever. And we have the utmost respect for one another about the trials and tribulations that we go through. So I, I got love for all those guys. I, first of all, I ain't got no hate in me. I tell you all this all the time. I don't dislike nobody in this room. And I do mean nobody, right? I don't dislike nobody in this room. I, I, I got love for everybody. Um, I really do. I want you all to be successful, kind, um, loving, um, helpful, um, persistent, and consistent. I, I got love for all you guys, ladies and gentlemen. Last one, Jason. Hey, Coach. Jason Jones, Sports Illustrated. Uh, Arrowhead marks the third road venue that most fans and observers would consider to be hostile territory or difficult. Can you talk about your coordinators and position coach and the, the preparation you guys get through? Well, we, we have a couple – guys that have uh, come from the professional level. So they ain't never scared. Like, they, they straight. They ain't tripping. They ain't thinking about hostility of certain environments because they've been to the upper room. They've been to the upper level. So I'm proud of them. I'm, I'm proud of the way they're using our athletes, the way they're using the players, the way uh, our whole darn staff, from academics on to what we're doing collectively. So I'm proud of uh, – our coordinators, our assistant coaches, the GAs, and everybody, man. It's a collective effort. It ain't just, you can't just point your finger at one thing and just say, this is why we're successful. No, it's a collective effort to be where we are. And we're appreciative and we're thankful and we're going to enjoy the moment. But everyone deserves their accolades, um, especially I'm going to dial it back to Miss Peggy because, uh, you know, it was about her. We wanted to get her to a bowl game. Now we want to get her to the bowl game. God bless you all. I appreciate it.